Alright, what's up everyone and welcome to another episode of The Strength Classroom. Today, I'm going to talk about why home gym owners, users, lifters, whatever you want to call them, need to be a little bit creative when it comes to basically makeshifting exercise. You've seen I've made things before. I did the kettlebell swing handle. I did how to do belt squats anywhere. Now, this video, I'm going to talk about just some other things that I have. So I have a pulley system that my friend designed. It's genius. Uh, top, the bottom, and everywhere in between. Ironically, I use the pin for my kettlebell swing handle as the thing to hold the weight. So it functions double, two things at once. And as you see here, I can do that pull down, I can do rows, I can do curls, tricep extensions whatever I really want. And it's basically my own portable cable system. The weights here do not translate to the weights in the gym because when you use the machines in the gym, every pulley that it has takes off some weight. So here it's only two pulleys. So when I use like 70 pounds, it feels like way more than 70 pounds. And it's not because it actually weighs more, it's because what's in the gym is actually easier to lift than what it says on the machine. Number two was how to do hyper extensions. Now here, what I like, I just experimented with these. And you put like some heavy dumbbells behind your feet. And if your rack has a spotter arm, or even just like the safeties on your rack, just as long as you don't have those stupid suspension straps from Rogue. My bad Rogue, I've bought your stuff in the past. I just, I'm not a fan of the suspension strap. And you put something soft just so it doesn't dig into your pelvis and you basically find the right height for the thing to hit your hips and then you just simply bend over. Make sure that you're securely dug into your feet on the dumbbells so you don't freaking flip over. You need to experiment with this first. Don't just bend over, hold a 45 because I don't want anyone landing right on their head. Next is reverse hypers. Now this one, I've always thought about. I know I am able to do reverse hypers with all the stuff I have in my gym right here. There's no way I will have to buy anything. I should have everything here. So then one day I'm like, you know what? I have ankle straps. I have a chain. I have a longer chain and I have a dip belt. What if I do the exact same thing on the bench? Just I hang the weight from the long chain on the dip belt, put the ankle straps on the chain, and then go from there. And what do you know, it worked like butter. And then I hung on to my rack so I didn't like fall and lose my body position. All I need to do is find out a way to get higher boxes. Because sometimes what I put them on, like my box, they tip a little bit and it's a little bit sketchy. I just have to control the weight and not make it swing so much. And it's good. That's another thing. If you're trying to do the way the hyper, uh, reverse hyper extensions to where you're trying to get like traction in the back and really let it swing, this will not happen because you will just tip over if you violently start swinging like how some people do them. Which is, I don't recommend anyway. I like doing them under control. So the less swing I get on the bench, the better in my opinion. Now the last one is, I saw, I follow Westside Barbell. I like Westside Barbell, I like the conjugate method, and all that stuff. I follow them on Instagram and they have this machine. I just call it the ramp deadlift where Something is into your hips, a la like a, a hyper extension. But as you go down, there's these things that the bars glide on that at the bottom, the bar starts off further away from you and puts you at a mechanical disadvantage to put more stress on like your posterior chain than a normal deadlift would. So it's more so like a machine type lift, quote unquote, almost an isolation, even though it hits more than one muscle group. And as you come up, it comes further, it comes closer to you and you have to almost like pull and so the bar is away from you like this and that puts more stress on your upper back. I like this lift and all I did was put together, put one of my farmer's handles on the safeties. I put my safety pins going downwards outside of my rack and it works beautifully. It's a, so in conclusion, what I'm saying is you don't have to do these four things. I'm just saying use a little bit of creativity. Not everything needs to be purchase, especially not for the absurd price, but I just lift by myself in my basement 
and I don't have the space for all those machines unless I want to take up my entire basement, which is just not practical. So what I'm saying is use a little bit of creativity, use your brain, and try to figure some stuff out. Hopefully you like the ideas that I put forward in this video and have in the past. I'm continuously trying to come up with new things that I don't have to purchase. Just, and it makes me feel like proud of myself that I've accomplished some sort of project in my home gym. So, if you like this video, please click that like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, share the videos with your friends if you think they'll like it as well, and as always, class is dismissed.